Hey, there you are. As much as I've read, it's all about how you live, right? But do you live to work or do you work to live? It's sort of like eating, right? In my career and in my lifetime, there's been so many things that have driven me and I'm always passionate. I spend my full time doing lesser things for some, greater things for others, but even the most tiny experience is an experience, right? So today's talk is about the work-life balance. Winston Churchill said it once that if your vocation is the same as your avocation, you'll never work another day in your life. The problem that he didn't take into account is that there's a lot of elements in any given person's life. There's the workplace, there's what you do um, professionally, and then there's your family and the private places. Let's figure out together what we can do to make our lives better, while at the same time performing on all of the above. Join me on the channel now. Hey guys, Dr. Nene here. I practice as a cardiothoracic, vascular, and general surgeon, and I'm now a health tech innovator who wants to improve lifespans and lifestyles. So stay healthy, stay curious, and keep watching. So, you know, I started thinking about this, and I thought, we've already talked about stress and burnout. We've always talked about PTSD, mental wellness, this and that. But part of that equation is about how you balance your work and your life. As a busy heart surgeon, I can tell you we were moving at 100 miles per minute sometimes, and other times we were at a crawl. But in all cases, it was hard to balance and in single situation. We know for a fact that if you are pushing the envelope too hard in your work, it can lead to serious health consequences in the way of increased heart disease, strokes, um, very, very bad nutrition, mental wellness issues, and at the same time, it can lead to dramatic changes in your social and family structure, whereby you end up with all sorts of issues um, with your kids, your wife, your husband, whatever may be the case. What's important is to define what things matter. At the same time, unique challenges in India have been found to cause India to have one of the lowest rankings in work-life balance. This can be from the need to travel three to eight hours sometimes just to get to work. In addition to that, it could be the competitiveness and the job stresses which come with it. It may lead to all kinds of complications in your health. These are the things that I find were critical for me. The one is set your goals and define what success looks like. When you have that in mind, you know what prices you have to pay ahead of time to board the boat and you also know what exits you have um, which you would consider success. What that meant to me as a heart surgeon is that I knew the number of hours I would need to work. My family knew the number of hours. And then we also defined private times and family times within that. When you're at work in the corporate setting, as in when I was running startups, it was almost limitless. And the funny part is when you're an employee, your hours are pretty much set for the most part not as a heart surgeon always. But when you own the business, it's even worse because the buck stops with you. And so everyone depends on you and at a moment's notice they could ask you to come in. If you've trained your teams well enough, it will result in empowerment and they will often take their role seriously and they will develop their own work-life balances. But the end result is that all of you should gain. So these are the tips I would say are critical. The first is make sure that all of the health related issues are resolved in your life, meaning your eating, sleeping, and workout schedules. Secondly, make sure that your family business is taken care of, meaning that you have attended to your uh, spouse and to your kids and to the other issues. It's going to be a trade-off because you can't have everything. Something has to give. Uh, and those are the critical parts of the machine. Then when you attack your work, you're focused. 
and you come in with the attitude that this is what I have to achieve and as I achieve those milestones and metrics, you tick them off. Once you finish that, when you come home, you need to be able to separate the two. And that means turning off your phones. It's very interesting, there was a recent study on um, emails and the answering of emails after hours. Now, if you're in a place like Australia where the work-life balance is really good, and they barely have to work after hours or on weekends, they just state it pretty seriously. And it's accepted. Counter that to a place like India where people are working six days a week, typically, and often on Sundays they're on call. And then counter that to some parts of the US, like the Bay Area or in healthcare and other things, where you're working 24 seven sometimes and you have no choices. At some point you need to sort of be human about this and say yeah, you can't achieve everything in one go. As a heart surgeon I can tell you I have had periods where I'd work 40, 50 hours at a stretch and then I would take eight hours downtime. Not the best for your life uh, in all senses, right? For your health, for your family's health, for your mental well-being and whatnot. So you have to define what you can and can't do. Nowadays, the work hours, particularly in residency and also in, in um, partnership, are much better, and you can define some of that. Um, we've talked about this in other talks about the five steps, and one of those things was mindfulness and meditation. I think you need to be able to focus without any type of um, nuisance or distraction. Not an easy task these days, and you know, I've even said in my timelines and everything else that you have to be able to turn things off and go unplugged once in a while. Not just once in a while, you do it at an interval so that you know you're getting to that. That sets you up for two things. One is you have a goal to achieve that. Uh, and, you know, it's almost like you're working for the weekend, if you will. But also it says that I'm going to achieve this much in that period of time. The second thing is, when you're off work, find something to occupy your mind which isn't work. <laughs> Having hobbies, you know, it's so funny with my, my parents and their generation, all they knew about is, is work. Because from the time they were young, they would go to 16 and they would finish their 10th and then they would go straight to a career with no chance to develop any type of hobbies. And it was only later that they could hope to kind of get along, but most of the time, their social interactions were getting together with friends and having dinner, right? Not a bad way to go, as long as you have time and everyone is in the same mindset. But what would be interesting is to improve your mind, body, and soul. Go out and push yourself. Make your activities and your sports and your life better. Start painting, do pottery, go and you know, learn how to do photography, do some writing. All of that is for yourself, but it's also for everyone around you and it keeps you occupied. I can tell you with heart surgeons, the worst day of their wives' lives is when they retire because you're used to being such a busy body most of your career. You come home and you organize every cabinet in sight, you go and micromanage every last process and you need to have it a certain way. You're very skilled at operations management and you're very skilled at managing uh, little details. But sometimes the big picture eludes you, so you gotta remember that big picture. Next, don't sacrifice your sleep. A lot of times people will work so hard in their day that when they get home, they want to basically enjoy all the time they have. I, I, I know about that because for us, sleeping was a luxury. Uh, we would joke about you could sleep when you're dead. It doesn't work that way. The studies are very, very clear on the role of sleep and well-being. And what's clear is if you don't sleep at intervals regularly and have adequate sleep, you, it can lead to serious health consequences. And more than health consequences, also a lot of mental well-being changes. And then added to that, you're going to be one grumpy person. So, you know, make sure that you have good hygiene for your sleep meaning that you plan on when you're gonna to go to bed. Don't just leave it out there. I know in your 20s you can do this stuff and never have a consequence. I did that mostly on call because I was on call a lot. 
But the issue is that as you grow older, it becomes very hard. And once you have interrupted sleep, getting back to sleep can be very challenging. So here's the next thing, and this is an interesting one. I've talked a little bit about what I went through. Now I'm in a position to manage more people. And the idea is to build cohesive teams who are loyal and productive on their own without you having to go to them. What that means is you have to encourage open-minded discussions. You have to share with them what experiences you had growing up, if you will, and avoid the mistakes you made, right? The second thing is there should be no competition, but camaraderie should be the central theme and they should be having fun at what they do. It's almost as if you are building a team where passion drives you. Look, there's going to be times when you're at each other's throats, but keep that internal. Never share that dirty laundry outside and never ever let them talk about each other outside of the general population. If they want to fight inside, fine, get it all out, vent it. And at the same time, encourage them to spend time with their families. Because for me, family and friends are critical elements of your life. And the experiences you generate together, as well as the experiences you generate with your work colleagues, are going to be some of the best things that you'll have and treasure over the years. Remember, you can only eat so much in a day, only live in so much, only drive so much. What will happen is the experiences you have will keep you happy even in the darkest times. As a manager, the other thing to keep in mind is be sensitive to spotting people who are under stress and just need to talk to someone and allow them to vent because a lot of times they'll hold it in and not be able to do that and they'll go home and take it out on someone. And so you will become a better manager and these people will be more loyal to you if you can just ask them if everything is going okay. We've talked about it in the burnout and the stress videos, but be realistic as to outcomes, right? You, Rome wasn't built in a day, as they say. Um, offer up some flexibility so that people can get their jobs done um, and speak to them normally. Incorporate counseling. I would say counseling is like a mainstay in many super athletes, CEOs, and very successful people. Why shouldn't it be for all of us? So in conclusion, I'm probably telling you stuff you already know, but what's critical is try to establish a work-life balance where what you do is what you love and what you love is what you do. Initially, there's going to be periods where every job has its crud, you know, for lack of better words you'll get past that. When you get to the point that you are happy in what you're doing, you will get to the point where the, the work is something you do for fun. At the same time, remember that you have a family and friends around you who depend on you and keep them as part of your circle because when th things are going bad, you need people to support you and vent and you need to be there for them. Um, never sacrifice your well-being if you can avoid it because the studies are very clear that in a poor work-life balance situation, you will end up with worse general health issues than the general population. In the end, it's all about life. And it can be many things to many people, but the idea is how do you make it better for yourself and in the process, make it better for everyone around you. I've given you tips for your own life from some of my own tips and also for everyone around you when you become a manager or you're taking leadership positions. Make sure that you're taking breaks at work. Make sure you're keeping up your eating habits. Make sure you're keeping up your personal well-being, health and workout schedules. And make sure that you're engaging in good conversations with your peers as well as your family and make sure that everyone is supported. Not an easy task, trust me. Been there, done that. Uh, I hope this helps and if you like what we say, hit the like button. If you want to see more of these, hit the subscribe button and always hit the bell icon so you'll get alerted. And then finally, share it with all your friends. Look forward to you in the next video. Thanks. for.